Jasmine Florentine, and I'm a mechanical engineer, author, and artist, and I love making stuff. In fact, that's why I became an engineer. There's lots of different kinds of engineers, but as a mechanical engineer and a product designer, I get to do all kinds of nifty stuff. I get to build robots, I get to draw ideas for new inventions, I even get to break stuff on purpose to see if it works. One of the things that I made is a book called Hex Allen and the Clanksmiths. It's not out yet, but for Engineers Week, I made a booklet with one of the projects. Hex Allen is 12 years old, and her best friends, Cam and Fuse, are Clanksmiths. In the book, that means that they use science and engineering instead of magic. You see, in Hex's world, everyone can use magic. Well, almost everyone. Hex can't do it, and neither can Cam and Fuse. That's why they became Clanksmiths instead. Together, Hex, Cam, and Fuse have a lot of adventures. They use science and engineering to get out of a bunch of different scrapes. Today, we're gonna build one of Hex's project, a nightlight that she uses to trick an ogre. Let's start with the materials you'll need. First, you'll need a jar. I just used, a, I think this was either a pasta sauce jar or a jam jar, and I cleaned it up. Some tape, scissors, a sheet of regular printer paper, a couple of three volt coin cell batteries, and some LEDs. You might be wondering what these things are. LED stands for light emitting diode. And basically when electricity runs through it, it lights up. So what happens when I attach this LED to the battery? Ba -ba 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 -ba. Ta -da! It lights up. The electric power flows from the battery and into the LED, but it only works if both of these metal prongs are touching the battery. So let's see what happens if I lift one prong away. It turns off. There's another important thing to note, which is if you look closely, the prongs are two different lengths. One is a little bit shorter than the other. So the battery also has two sides. One side says plus and the other is blank. You want the long prong to be touching the side with a plus on it. Otherwise, if I flip it around and put the long prong on the side without anything written on it, it doesn't work. To get our lamp ready, we're gonna need a few LEDs. I use six for my lamp, but you can use as many or as few as you want. More LEDs means the lamp will be brighter, but it also uses more battery up. So the first step is going to be bending the prongs of the LEDs, and that's to make the LED stick up later, and that'll make more sense once I put it together. So I'm gonna bend these kind of like this, and then I'm going to attach it to a battery. And again, make sure that the longer prong is connected to the plus side of the battery. And then I'm gonna use a bit of tape to hold it together so that the LED stays on. Ta-da! So you're gonna do this as many times as you need if you have 10 LEDs, you'll do it 10 times. If you have one LED, that's fine. We'll work with just the one LED. The next step is to tape the LEDs inside the jar. One thing to notice is as you're taping it, you might find that the LEDs sort of flicker on and off. If that happens, it just means the prongs aren't keeping connection. So you just need to squeeze down and make sure that tape is holding it really well. So I'm gonna tape my LEDs to the inside of the lid and the bottom of the jar, but you can do it however you want.
The next thing I'm going to do is put the lid onto the jar. So this looks pretty cool, but the lights are kind of small right now, and they're very bright in some places if I look at them directly, but the whole thing doesn't quite feel like a lamp yet. To do that, I want the light to spread out more evenly. So I'm going to use my sheet of printer paper to help me with that. So I'm gonna cut it to the right size to actually fit around the jar. Right now it's kind of tall, so I'll mark it with a pencil and then I'll cut it. Once I've cut the paper to the right size, I'm gonna tape it around the jar. So I will put one small piece of tape just to hold it in place first. And then wrap this all the way around. And you can see the lights are already spreading out more evenly. But let's see what this looks like in the dark. This is what the lamp looks like in the dark. It works great as a nightlight. The lamp that Hex Allen makes in my book looks like this. But when she made it, she had an angry ogre making her rush. But you have as much time as you want, so you can get creative with your lamp. For instance, I used construction paper to decorate this one. And you can also try using paint or markers to decorate yours. Another thing you might want to look at is how different materials work. This is a plastic bottle, but because the plastic isn't clear, it spreads the light out evenly even though it doesn't have a sheet of paper taped to it. Another thing you might want to explore is different kinds of LEDs. LEDs come in all different colors. So you don't have to make a lamp using white LEDs, you can use your favorite color. Another type of LED that you might want to look at, which I used in here, is an LED strip. This has a whole bunch of LEDs attached to each other and they're just connected to one battery so I don't have to tape every single battery on. If you want to learn more about Hex and her adventures, keep an eye out for my book. You can learn more about it and find out when it's available for pre-order online. It comes out in 2022, but until then, you can check out my website for some other fun projects.